Well, hello, everybody. You know in Forrest Gump, where he's over in in Vietnam serving, and he, he writes a letter to Jenny where he talks about all the different kinds of rain, the sideways rain, rain that seemed to come up from the ground. Well, all that rain, I think, has happened the last three hours here in Southern California. We are uh, not getting as bad of it from the bomb cyclone as the people in Northern California, who I hope are doing okay who I hope are getting their power restored, who I hope are staying, who I hope are staying safe, warm, and dry. Uh, but the weather here is pretty crazy. It was just beautiful and sunny, and now the clouds are rolling in, and the rain will probably start again real soon. By the way, Denver is in the house. Thank you to Cousin Vinny for pointing that out. Ha ha dollars and come on now, 81 are here to play live trivia for the first time. Welcome to you first timers. We are so happy to have you here with us. You're about to take a trip down trivia lane and speaking of which we asked you where all of you went on your last trip here's what you've been saying joanne went to san juan puerto rico that's really cool cole went to ocean city maryland ash went to vegas for thanksgiving i've done vegas for thanksgiving which uh, uh which one of the buffets did you go to i went to caesar's when i was there and it was really good Jobra did a whole West Coast swing. Now check this out. The coasts of Oregon, Washington State, and California over the course of a month. You got to see so much beautiful coastline all up and down the western coast of the United States of America. How cool that you got to take a month to see it all. That's great. LM80 visited the French countryside. Jealous. Brad B. Doc's last trip was to Myrtle Beach. And guess what? It's happening right now. Brad B. Doc is in Myrtle Beach. That's awesome. And Dazzle Dog's last trip was at their front door when they broke their foot two days before Christmas. That wasn't what I meant, but you probably also had to have a trip to the emergency room. I hope you are feeling better and healing up. It's National Bird Day, folks, so thanks for flittering on over to the Thursday edition of Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. It's time to push all of your random bits of knowledge out of the nest as you play for today's grand prize. That is $1,000, and everyone who can correctly answer these 10 multiple-choice general trivia questions will split it. But that's not all. It never is. In this game, you will earn one bonus SB for every question you get right after question number one, even if you've already been eliminated. So let me walk you through that. You get a question wrong, you may no longer be in it for the grand prize. However, you can still earn bonus SB by continuing to play and get questions right. However, at the end of the game, we will ask you to claim those bonus SB in order to keep them, otherwise they go away. You don't want that. Thankfully, claiming is simple. It's as simple as clicking a button that appears on your screen as the game is ending. But if you are a grand prize winner, you will not have to claim anything. The bonus SB you earn throughout will be rolled automatically into your share of that $1,000 grand prize. And for you newcomers, it's real simple. I'm gonna read the question. They will also appear on your screen along with three answers. You will tap the answer that you think is correct in order to lock it in. Simple as that. Now, the first time you get a question wrong, as long as it's before question number 10, you can rejoin to get another shot at the grand prize. You can rejoin using SB. It's generally one SB to rejoin, or you can use a free rejoin. And if you don't have any, you can always click get more rejoins in the main menu at the end of the game, and then you can earn rejoins by watching videos. So watch a video, get a rejoin, and then do it again, get another rejoin. Not only that, but we are giving away a 500 SB prize each game to a random player who earns and claims at least one SB in the game. That's why you stick around. We announce the winner of each game at the beginning of the following game, which means I do have the winner from Wednesday's game, which was Sinbon. Congratulations, like Cinnabon, but shorter. You will be accredited shortly to everyone else. We are doing a drawing for this game, so stick around. Be sure to claim the SB that you earn. And we'll announce the winner at the beginning of our Friday Flash game. Finally, if you're looking for more SB outside of what you win from today's game, you can always click the More Ways to Earn button at the main menu at any time, and you'll be taken to an exclusive offer wall with opportunities to earn SB towards your daily goal. It's always there and worth checking out after the game, and any time a game is not happening. But right now, the comments are flying away so that the game can begin. Here is question number one. What is the term for an animal that feeds primarily on flesh? Is it a carnivore, an omnivore, or a pescatarian? An animal that feeds primarily on flesh has this term behind it. 
Most often, creatures with this diet are predators, hunting down their prey just so they can themselves survive. Because, hey, that's what carnivores do. Carnivores is the answer. 98% of you getting that one right. That means immediately we have about 32,000 people in grand prize contention. Well done. Love to see so many people getting that first one right. Omnivore uh, can survive on both vegetation and flesh. And pescatarians are generally people who eat fish and vegetables, like people. I guess a bear is a pescatarian. It's really a carnivore because a bear will also eat other animals. But they love those fish. They're, they're the preeminent fisher people, fisher creatures, those bears. All right. We've already had everybody who's out rejoined, plus some of our stragglers, over 33,300 people in grand prize contention. And we are on to question number two. And from here on out, every question you get right will earn you one bonus SB. Here we go. Question number two. Who is the oldest Kardashian sister? Is it Kendall, Courtney, or Kylie? Who is the oldest of the Kardashian sisters? Well, looks like you know this one from what I'm seeing so far. Her on-again, off-again relationship with Scott Disick has given way to her whirlwind romance with Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker. You know who I'm talking about. Courtney Kardashian is the answer. 92% of you getting that one right. Well done. She was the first of the Kardashian children. Then came Chloe. Then came Kim. I think Kim is the baby of the three. And then Rob is in there somewhere. And then uh, Kendall and Kylie were Chris Jenner. Uh, or, well, Chris and Bruce Jenner. There you go. That's the family tree. But they're all in keeping up with the Kardashians. So you know what I meant when I asked that. Well done of the 8% of you who are eliminated. Almost everybody coming right back in. That is what I like to see that can-do spirit. And we are now on to question number three. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is, Q3. What Elton John song was rewritten in 1997 as a tribute to Diana Spencer? Is it your song, Rocket Man, or Candle in the Wind? Elton John rewrote this one about Lady Di. With a few changes to the lyrics, the song became a touching tribute to his friend Lady Diana and a worldwide best-selling hit all over again called Candle in the Wind 97. That's right. Goodbye, English Rose. 95% of you getting that one right. Well done. Uh, if you've not seen the movie about Elton John, which is called Rocket Man, starring Taron Egerton or Edgerton, it's very good. And he is fantastic as Elton John. It's a really, really good performance. And his voice is really good. It's really, really good, y'all. All right, let's move on to question number four now. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is Q4. What piece of art was made in exactly four different versions? Was it Starry Night, The Scream, or Water Lilies? Exactly four different versions. So the other two were made in more than that. First, there was a painted version. Then there was a crayon version, followed by a second pastel version. And then in 1910, tempura paint was used to create the final version of Edvard Munch's The Scream. The Scream is the answer. 35% of you getting that one right. That was a tough one. 65% of you just got eliminated. 45% going with Starry Night. There were 21 different versions of that piece of art by Van Gogh. And then Water Lilies was a series of 250 pieces of art. So that is, uh, those are incorrect, unfortunately, but they're beautiful pieces of art. And that is fortunate. And here comes the rain. I can already hear it rolling in, but it's not going to stop us. We are waterproof here at Swag Bucks Live. And so are you as you continue to come back over three quarters of the people eliminated from that one coming right back in. We're already four questions deep in this game. Only six questions remaining at this moment. And we are on to question number five. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Q5. What country has the most states in the world? Is it Russia, China, or the United States? There was a hint about this on Swagit. Maybe that'll help you. Huber checking in with the Swagat hints this week. While it seems like a lot of other countries boast a multitude of states, and they do, when it comes to volume, we're number one. We're number one with 50 of them, and possibly Puerto Rico's going to join in at some point. The U.S. is the answer. The United States, it's in the name. It would be weird if it wasn't the answer. 91% of you getting that one right. 
Well done. You knew the red, white, and blue was the correct answer. And guess what? We're already halfway done with this game. Now we are moving on to question number six. It is worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Here it is. What is the term for parachuting off of fixed objects? Is it skydiving, hurtling, or base jumping? Parachuting off of a fixed object. What is the term for that? Make videos that will scare the living daylights out of me from anywhere. A cliff, a bridge, even a, sky, even a skyscraper. When you are participating in base jumping, base jumping is the answer. 93% of you getting that one right. I mean, it's incredible that people do this, but it is also uh, uh, terrifying. It is terrifying to me. I, the skydiving also terrifying. I don't think I could do either. Uh, if you've done either, Congratulations, and I'm glad you're still here to play with us. All right, let's move on to question number seven now. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is, Q7. The now defunct Guinness World Traveler had what job? Was it drinking beer, selling beer, or making beer? What did the Guinness World Traveler do? The job only lasted from 1899 until 1921, but what a job it was. Belonging to Arthur T. Shand, among others, he was an American ex-brewer who traveled the world tasting Guinness for quality control. That's right, he was drinking beer. That is what he did for a living. He went around and drank the beer and said, this seems good. 30% of you getting that one right. Well done, but that doesn't mean 70% of you just got eliminated. These Thursday games are the toughest ones we have. If you like easier games, you're going to be real thrilled with our Friday Flash tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific Time. In the meanwhile, I do see a fair number of people rejoining. Just about a third of the people eliminated coming right back in. Still over 10,000, over 11,000 people in grand prize contention. That number continues to rise. Uh, I would not be good. I don't drink, so I wouldn't be good for a Guinness World Traveler. But if they had like a high C ecto cooler World Traveler, that I would be great at. I think I've had maybe more of that drink than anybody uh, who's ever walked the earth. All right, let's move on to question number eight. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Howard Carter is best known for what archaeological find? Is it Lucy, the Australopithecus, the Rosetta Stone, or King Tut's tomb? Hubert was helping people out with this over on Swagget. Yes, he was. Howard Carter is best known as one of the world's greatest Egyptologists and will always be remembered for his huge discovery of King Tut's tomb. King Tut's tomb is the answer. 90% of you getting that one right. Well done. I'm going to guess a bunch of you already knew that. But for those of you who weren't sure, I hope that Hubert was able to help you along. Let's move on to question number nine now. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is, Q9. Which of the following video games is a first-person shooter? Is it Pac-Man, Millipede, or Doom? Which of those is a, an FPS, first-person shooter? FPS games drop you right into the action, creating a more intense gaming experience. Which made the gore-filled monster-hunting game Doom such a hit? Doom is the answer. 10,212 of you made it this far, and you are ready for our final question. But before we get to that final question where you reload your brains, <laughs> see what I did there? You're here, so I know you love earning SB by playing games. So you need to check out all the different mobile games that you can earn SB from for downloading and playing. We got games like Star Trek Fleet Command, Family Island, Club Vegas, and Dice Buddies. There's so many more to check out. You can earn SB while you have fun, no matter where you are. That's the beauty of mobile gaming. Check it out after the game and keep having fun while you earn. I know this is number one in all your hearts, but surely some of those games would be a very suitable uh, second place favorite. That's all I'm saying. We have 10,313 people vying for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. Almost 33,000 of you have stuck around to the very end. And I got one more bonus SB up for grabs right now, if you can correctly answer question number 10. Here it is. In which decade does the musical Chicago take place? Is it the 1990s, the 1960s, or the 1920s? Film adaptation takes place in this decade also, if that helps. The popularity of gangster culture and the draw of fame in print and radio are too much for aspiring showgirl Roxy Hart, and the music and costumes immediately let you know 
You are in the 1920s, my friend. 1920s is the answer. 9,588 of you knew that one, and you are splitting our grand prize. Well done. Well done to each and every one of you. All of our winners are taking home 11 SBN grand prize money, plus the bonuses you earned along the way. Shamrock Delfina, you are a winner. Erica Jane, you are a winner as too. Uh, Miss Victoria L, you are a winner. And gosh, Rocky, you are a winner. Well, Jay Rocky, who? what's that? Congratulations to every single one of our grand prize winners. Congratulations to those of you who stuck around and earned bonus SB, even if you didn't get a piece of the grand prize. You have more SB in your account now than you did when the game started, and that makes you a winner in my book. And now they have all these new SB in your account, you know what to do with them, of course. Redeem them for PayPal Cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Great job all week long. Please come back tomorrow for our Friday Flash game, if you please. Thank you for playing Swagbucks Live, and we will see you then, my friends.